I'm Adrian Pedersen today on Upfront. I fought for conservative principles here in the Wisconsin legislature and I've helped to make them a reality in the Badger State today. He's running I'll talk with Senate Majority Leader Scott Fitzgerald about his bid for Congress and whether compromise is possible on gun laws. Then college cuts. Our region is going to be particularly hard hit. The population change poised to hit colleges and universities. And retirement security state treasurer Sarah Godlewski on what the state can do to help an aging population get ready for retirement. Taking on the issues important to Wisconsin. This is Upfront with your host, Adrian Pedersen. Thank you for joining us. It seems every week we're reminded about Wisconsin's importance in the 2020 election. Candidates for president continue to make Wisconsin a top stop. The most recent, Minnesota Senator Amy Klobuchar in the Milwaukee area. Her stops last Thursday included a dairy farm in Random Lake, a meeting with community organizers in Milwaukee, and a visit to a small business in Milwaukee's Sherman Park neighborhood. I'm only uh, one of two candidates uh, that's on that debate stage that's from the Midwest. And that matters because I understand these rural issues. I understand Midwest manufacturing issues and many other things. Senate Majority Leader Scott Fitzgerald made it official. He's running for the 5th Congressional District. The seat Republican Jim Sensenbrenner is retiring from after a 40-year run in Congress. So we're looking ahead to that race now with Scott Fitzgerald, the Republican from Juneau. Thank you for your time. You bet. Good to be with you. So I want to get to more on the congressional run, of course, in just a few minutes. But okay. first... Let's get to some state business. Last week, Governor Evers rolled out red flag legislation. Of course, that meaning it would allow a judge to take someone's guns away temporarily if they're deemed a danger to themselves or others. I know that you don't support this and that fellow Republicans do not support that. Is there any middle ground though? Is there any variation of this that you could support? Well, right now, I think if you talk to any circuit court judge in Wisconsin, that they feel like they have the tools. I mean, obviously there'd be exceptions, but they feel like they have the tools necessary if somebody feels like somebody's gonna be dangerous either to themselves or to others. So the red flag stuff, I think in Wisconsin, we've had this discussion over the last couple of months. I just don't see any legislation moving specific to what the governor has been requesting over the last couple of days. So, so. you don't even feel like there's any way to tweak this possibly? Because I know you know that 81% of Wisconsinites who have a gun in the home support this. Right. Well, specific to domestic violence, we already have statutes in place where a circuit court judge can order that you know someone's guns could be held by another. But um, for us, I, I just don't see any momentum for that legislation at all right now. And no plan to try to tweak it to get something. No, and universal background checks too. I mean, anytime you're gonna ask somebody to submit the serial numbers from their guns to a state or federal official, uh, you know, it's gonna violate the Second Amendment. I, so I just don't see anything happening on that front as well. And a lot of discussion in D.C. about it, but I just don't see the Wisconsin legislature going there at all. As the president has said in the past that he supports some version of a red flag law. Well, the, the, the crazy thing is, I think that the governor went as far as the mandatory buyback. Well, which, he said he would consider that when asked about it. Yeah, he didn't come up with a plan for that. That's confiscation, and that is completely against the Second Amendment. So I think there's some Democrat members of the legislature are very nervous right now about how far Governor Evers is and how extreme he has become on this overall issue. Let's also talk about vaping because we've, we've yeah. discussed that a lot on this show and people are talking about it across the country. The governor said he would be open to possibly a ban on flavor e-cigarettes here in Wisconsin. What do you think about that? This, this is brand new. I mean, this is brand new for the Wisconsin legislature. We have had some discussions about vaping in and around, uh, you know, uh, an overall discussion about how do we get it out of high schools? Because we're starting to hear from not only administrators, but principals and certainly uh, teachers who are saying this is becoming a big issue for them. Uh, so I think that's kind of been the discussion so far. But, you know, the deaths as of late and, and any other discussion beyond that, we just, um, we haven't fully, you know, kind of flushed it out. And I think we'll see where we're at in the, in the near future. And Mayor Barrett was on this show last weekend, and he was talking about wanting to give voters the chance in Milwaukee County to vote on a 1% sales tax increase. I read that you said you'd be shocked if this got any momentum. Why? 
And it's, it's probably even more dead on arrival right now. And the reason for it is, I think, and I, and I saw the interview with the mayor, um, it, they can't really articulate where the revenue would even go, but the legislature is just not going to go along with this right now. I think that uh, overall there's maybe some laudable projects there, but uh, a sales tax increase is just not going to happen in Madison. He said he was worried about losing police officers specifically. Well, that's kind of been his mantra all along. I mean, all you have to do is talk to Milwaukee police and they would have a different view on that than what the mayor has had for the last decade. So, yeah, I heard him, I heard him uh, offer that response, but uh, I'm not buying it. And I want to get back now to your congressional run. So we know that you're a fierce ally with President Trump. You have been all along. You agree on a lot. Is there anything that you can point to that you disagree with the president on? I, nothing that comes to mind right now because, I mean, my focus has been more overall. Uh, what is the effect on America and how is America doing and how are the states doing? Um, in Wisconsin right now, the economy is roaring. Uh, not only is unemployment low, but there's an, a real expansion that's been going on. When you look at our three sectors, whether it's uh, certainly light manufacturing is probably the best example, it continues to grow. And that's as a result of President Trump shaking things up in D.C. So, you know, a surplus in Wisconsin means possibly a surplus in other states. That's all connected. And uh, certainly I think that, uh, you know, that is as a result of Trump, which is why I think he's going to be reelected in Wisconsin. And when, when we talk about the economy, we should talk about tariffs. And you've said in the past that you support the president's hard line on this. But how far do you think is too far? I mean, when will this start hurting the people you could be representing in terms of farmers and manufacturers? Yeah, when I talk to farmers and, you know, it depends what part, what segment of agriculture they're involved in, whether it's dairy or pork producers or some that are just doing crops. Um, you know, what they say is we're with the president, you know, we're with them because for too long we saw that China was having a direct effect on the overall markets. Um, he's on the offense. He continues to push. China is now responding to that. And uh, I think the farmers are going to hang in there with them because of that. For too long they were being pushed around by those, uh, for the most part, China and the markets. That, that's starting to change, and I, I think they're going to hang in with them because of that. Well, and I talked to one farmer who said this didn't ruin his business, the tariffs didn't, but it kind of added, he felt like, insult to injury. And the other area we have to talk about is those manufacturing jobs. I was reading in Bloomberg that in six months, Wisconsin lost 4,000 positions. Do you think the tariffs has to do with that? No, I, you know, the, the ups and downs of light manufacturing in Wisconsin, uh, there's a ripple effect that happens uh, each and every time there's a major manufacturer that, that might be looking for um, a little bit of an expansion on a market. So, I, you know, what, whether it's something in my state Senate seat or what we see kind of statewide, uh, Wisconsin's in a good position right now, and I think it's because of light manufacturing. So I know you've said that you plan to work as Senate Majority Leader throughout this congressional campaign anything left that you would really want to get done before you could potentially have a new position? Yeah, actually, I'm hoping to get new numbers out of our state budget that once again shows that we're in excess on revenue. That rainy day fund is up to $600 million. So before we adjourn this session, I'd really like uh, to talk to the speaker about offering one more tax cut before we leave this session, probably in March or April. Uh, I think we're going to be able to do it, and I think it'll put families in a much better position in Wisconsin. Senator Fitzgerald, thank you. Thank you. Good to be with you. Our editorial partner, WISPolitics.com, tracks the races of statewide interests. You'll find the latest 2020 news on the election blog at WISPolitics.com. Coming up, are you ready for retirement? For too many people, the answer is no. I'll talk to Wisconsin State Treasurer about the new task force that's looking to help. But first, the looming problem for colleges and universities, why they'll be seeing fewer students, and what some are doing about it right now. Upfront, brought to you by WPS Health Insurance.